Good morning. It's a lovely spring day here in Sydney. I love long weekends. I can get more done. And better than yet, I've got a beautiful day, so I've got the garage door open, and we can begin to glue up the frame for this project. So here we go. This is my dry fit assembly. There are my four brand new corner clamps. And another hint stolen from woodworking for mere mortals is baking paper. Very handy for the glue. I'm just going to have this sitting on the floor after it's all clamped up, needs to dry for a few hours. Put the baking paper underneath and it won't stick to your garage floor. So let's get these clamps in action. Bit bloody fiddly, isn't it? So if you had any illusions whatsoever that I had any idea what I was doing, let's do a quick reality check. Here is three hours later after gluing up my four corners. This one, beautiful, look at that. Dead set, 90 square, reasonably strong. I say reasonably because that's where the good news ends. It suddenly dawned on me, as I pulled off my clamps, that I'd broken a number one rule. I've glued end grain. End grain is this bit, the bit that you've cut. It really absorbs glue and is basically crap for gluing together things. There's no real way I could have avoided this using the bevel cut uh, for these frames, but it didn't actually occur to me until after I glued them together, poorly, that this was going to be a slight problem. So we thought, well, this is a beginner's workshop. Let's try something else instead of the frustration of trying to re-glue everything. Screwing. Screwing works much better. Uh, however, it also has now pointed out yet another problem. Take away the good frame. Oh, look at that. That's how good the glue works. That one's still 90. Probably going to be hard to see on the camera, but if I apply the straight edge to there, once this is all glued up, it's off by mm, five degrees? Uh, yeah, about five. So over the length of the board, that's a lot. And uh, not fantastic, even for what is going to be a completely bodgy pegboard on my garage wall. It needs to be at least vaguely square uh, in order to fit into the gap properly. So today has been very frustrating. Uh, however, I've learned an awful lot and it just goes to show you that the best laid plans of a geocacher or a novice woodworker usually stuff up in spectacular style. Let me see if I can do something to fix this. So I'm getting through the corners, got another one down, quickly sanded off the high bits, then put in using the wall even as it is. Put in my 90 degree there, and we can see it now actually sits pretty much at 90, not quite again, about 89, 88, it'll do me. Now that's all nice and steady. Grab the drill, put in some pilot holes. Helps you have the drill on forward. Countersinks. By the way, love the quick change on the impact driver. And finally, lock it all up with a couple of screws. And that's how you don't build a frame. Well, what a schmozzle that was. Probably what I should have called my channel. Anyway, that's the frame cornered up. Obviously got the loose bits in the middle. Uh, they're only going to be held in by glue. So the next step is to get that slightly oversized pegboard and cut it down to size. Roughly at first I'll go around the outside of that existing frame and then I'll do some smaller cuts just to trim off and hopefully make it fit in those dados relatively smoothly. I knew these long boards would come in handy. 
this cut doesn't need to be anywhere near accurate because I'm actually cutting it a bit proud. I've left the extra space to trim off a little bit further down the line. This is just to get rid of this bit of dead wood that I don't need. And we're playing join the dots. So no guides or anything set up. I've literally just scribbled a line all the way down the board. I've got my blade set very, very shallow. It's only 5mm MDF. And we're going to carefully proceed to cut straight up here. And for once today, something actually worked how I thought it would. That's nice. So now I've just cut this uh, pegboard down to make it a little bit more manageable for my island table. I'm taking more care with this cut. Again, I've actually got a little bit of play because of the depth of the dados that I've cut into the frame. This edge here is going to be perfectly flat, so it's going to be the bottom. Top edge doesn't have to be 100% perfectly flat, which is great when you're using this sort of jerry rig setup. So I have taken more care though of the bed runners, which have proved awesome for this. I might even keep them for this exact purpose. I've got down a straight edge. That's a factory edge along there. I know it doesn't look like much, but it is actually pretty darn straight. Again, really shallow blade, but this time one slight change we're gonna make is I'm gonna put the good dust mask on because that MDF just kicked up a whole bunch of super fine dust. And I'm pretty sure that's not terribly good stuff to be breathing with all the glue and whatever else they make it out of. So I'll do one more quick check along the line to make sure it's uh, all good, and then we will make this cut for how to be pegboard at the correct height. Well, we made the cut, but we had a bit of the uh, wandering island bench again. However, success. Bug me, it actually worked. Oh, well, it's been a very frustrating day. You can probably see the light on outside over my head and I've got to get upstairs and make the wife a dinner. Uh, however, there's only one little thing left to do in terms of uh, boxing the frame, and that is to cut this much out of the pegboard. They're obviously not exactly the right length either, so I'm going to double check this against the wall to make sure that all my distances are right. These I did cut a little bit proud, so I just need to trim them down slightly. Got to trim down the pegboard, obviously a bit more. And then the way I think I'm going to cheat to get this all back together, because obviously glue is not being my friend at the moment, is to get another piece of wood and just mount it slightly longer and I'll be able to screw and hold these two middle bits in. No, not pretty, not classy, not very well prepared, but damn it, we'll have a pegboard by the end of the day. As anyone in business, coding, or pretty much any other profession will tell you, the greatest skill you can have is to be able to turn a feck up into a feature. I am now going to have a few feet of a very lovely curved round over piece of wood supporting my new pegboard just a little bit off the workbench, which is actually something I was thinking of doing, and now i found a, well, opportune way of putting that plan into action. One of my little offcuts of test piece actually, I have cut into two six centimeter bits and two three centimeter bits. The first one I've already got installed. So you'll see the plan here. These are my middle sections and I was trying to figure out a secure way of doing that as we learned earlier, end grained glue ain't gonna cut it. Even though this isn't structural per se, I don't want it popping out at any one time. I've got to be able to screw it in somehow with my current skill level. So the first thing I've done is, you might be able to see there, I have actually put glue on there. So I've been doing a little bit of watching YouTube on uh, end grain gluing and sealing it up will help. So I've got a coat or two on there. It just wicks it up. It is literally like straws. The glue just disappears a few seconds later. So those mites were never going to work. We'll work on that uh, technique in the future. Anyway, I'm going to put my piece in the middle here, secure it with the bridge of two of these feet on either side and replicate this foot over there and that will be the bottom of the pegboard done. Still gotta figure out what I'm gonna do at the top, but I've got a sneaking suspicion that this pegboard has at least one more feature to go.